Lithium is undoubtedly the first thing that comes to mind when you regard batteries. If you're old enough to recall when the batteries in your traditional game or CD players back in the day began to corrode, the thought of utilizing batteries may evoke terrible childhood memories. The harm lithium batteries cause the environment when they are not recycled properly and the little energy they store is another dent to the success story of this battery. After ending up in landfills or rivers, the chemicals leach into the soil and contaminate groundwater and surface water, affecting the ecosystems in the area. The issue of delivering a consistent, year-round power supply from renewable sources, despite shifting seasons and changeable weather, became a scientific problem that engineers worked endlessly to solve. The need for more sustainable choices, particularly for storing wind, solar, and hydroelectric power, came effortlessly to light. The need to look elsewhere besides lithium became inevitable. True, sodium-ion batteries are less expensive and environmentally friendly since the Earth's crust contains 999 times more sodium than lithium. At the back of a winding, tree-lined countryside road in western Finland, some young engineers believe they may have discovered a solution to one of the green energy industry's most significant obstacles. The answer laid at the Vatajenkoski power plant, located 270 kilometers, 168 miles, northwest of Finland's capital. Helsinki is astonishingly simple, abundant, and inexpensive. Sand. However, can a sand battery change the energy game? How does it work? And is it a viable energy storage path? Let's explore this argument and see if we can decide. Before delving into the sand battery, reviewing the history of thermal energy storage and the technology underlying this discovery would be prudent. Chemical storage is one of many options for storing renewable energy. Interestingly, instead of storing energy, renewables can be converted into heat and stored. In other terms, the battery would be thermal or heat. But why should we worry about zero-carbon heat storage? According to EIA, the Energy Information Administration, in 2021, heating, combined with ventilation and cooling, accounted for less than 50% of the energy demand of buildings in the United States. However, this energy comes from unclean sources. Over 50% of newly constructed American homes still use natural gas for space and water heating. Also, according to recent research, about 8 to 11 percent of U.S. energy-related CO2 emissions are produced by heating water in our homes and offices and fueling low-temperature industrial operations such as brick and food drying. You can see why constructing more thermal storage units will lessen our dependency on fossil fuels, reducing our heat consumption's impact on the environment. In a significant development, two young Finnish engineers have discovered how to store green energy in a sand battery. Tommy Eronen and Marku Ilonen, the young creators of Polar Night Energy, have just connected the world's first commercial sand battery to a power station in Finland. How does the technology function? Currently, sensible heat storage is one of the most prevalent TES methods. Essentially, you heat a liquid or solid by collecting wind or solar energy during the day or in summer when it is abundant. Typically, this is accomplished by passing electricity through a heating element in contact with a storage substance. Just reduce the battery's temperature by piping in cool air to dissipate the heat. Your heat transfer medium can be as simple as water or sophisticated as molten salts, commonly used in concentrated solar power CSP plants. One of the preparatory reasons we need to construct more energy storage facilities is to reduce the amount of renewable energy, such as solar and wind, that is curtailed. This occurs when energy output exceeds demand. A good illustration is when wind turbines remain stationary during a windy day. They have disabled them because there is no need for the energy produced. The question is, how does the sand battery work? The Vatajenkoski power station is home to the world's first sand battery on a commercial basis. The battery flaunts about 100 tons of low-grade construction sand, two district heating pipes, and a fan, all contained within a 7-meter tall steel container. Due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Finland lost access to its natural gas and energy sources. And because wind and solar power are weather-dependent, they tend to operate intermittently making them an unreliable energy source for large populations. Polar Night Energy, a Finnish business, recently added a new toy to the heated sandbox. 
a 7-meter tall steel silo carrying 100 tons of low-quality sand and several pipelines. However, this storage media is not used to construct a sand castle in the Finnish Arctic night sky. Sand grains are remarkably effective at storing renewable energy, as discovered by Eromin and Ilonen. This has traditionally been considered a weak point for renewables. After loading 100 tons of sand into a 4 by 7 meter steel container, the sand is heated using solar and wind energy. Local energy providers can store and reroute this heat to provide warmth to buildings in adjacent towns. This occurs via a process known as resistive heating, in which the sand is heated through the friction of electrical currents. Heat is produced when electricity flows through any material, such as sand. After being heated to 600 degrees Celsius using power generated by solar panels and wind turbines, the sand becomes a battery. A fan pumps this heated air around the sand inside the battery through heat exchange pipes. Dense insulation surrounds the sand, maintaining the temperature inside the battery at 600 degrees Celsius even when the temperature outside is below freezing. It sounds straightforward, right? The sand battery created by Eromin and Ilonin is currently heating houses, businesses, and the local swimming pool in the Kankanpa district of Finland. When full, the battery holds 8 megawatt per hour of heat energy. When energy demand increases, the battery discharges around 200 kilowatt of power through the heat exchange pipes. This is sufficient to provide heating and hot water for approximately 100 households and a public swimming pool in Kankanpa, complementing grid-supplied energy. The battery is recharged overnight when electricity costs are less expensive. The company employs low-cost, low-quality sand that has been rejected by builders rather than the high-quality river sand that is needed in enormous quantities for construction, resulting in global scarcity. How long-lasting is sand? The next question is whether or not this battery can be implemented globally, and will massive sand extraction impact the natural environment? Even though sand can be found all over the world, it is a commodity that is in great demand, particularly for use in construction projects. According to a study, sand demand would increase by 40 to 45 percent over the next four decades. Typically, sand used for construction is extracted from lakes and rivers, which can harm the environment. However, Ilonen and Eronen argue that the origin of the sand is irrelevant for sand batteries, as any sand with a high enough density might store heat for clean energy. With this basic yet brilliant design, the future of storing clean energy is now considerably more promising. Global interest in the Polar Night Energy Initiative has already been stirred as many nations seek ways to store their renewable energy before winter arrives. As nations strive to transition away from fossil fuels, it's encouraging to see another viable green storage solution proposed especially one that has the potential to work nearly anywhere in the world. After conducting a 3 megawatt per hour pilot in Tampere to heat a few buildings, the startup refined and scaled up its idea. In collaboration with Vada Jankowski, the operator of Kankonpa's district heating network, a larger sand battery is currently heating local homes, offices, and even the municipal swimming pool, serving approximately 9,099 people. This could be replicated any place in the world where district heating infrastructure exists. Aronin claims that the process of transferring heat back into energy is only 30% efficient with the current technology. However, he does not consider this a serious concern. Intriguingly, Polar Night Energy is in the midst of obtaining a contract to construct a second battery for another Finnish district heating provider. So have you decided yet? Do you believe the sand battery will gain popularity? Comment below and let me know, and be sure to listen to my subsequent episode. If this video is insightful, please go on and like this video. Remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more updates.